Hey everyone, it's Selena with CMC Fine Art. In today's video, we're going to watch a time lapse of my hawk painting. His name is Red. He is an adventurer traipsing through a world of wonder. <laughs> Not quite Wonderland, but it is very far away from his real home. If you want to learn a little bit more about what inspired me to create this piece, I'll talk a little bit about that. And I will also go over a few highlights of the piece and some of my struggle points as well. This is a 24 by 36 Redrick's watercolor canvas. I really love these canvases. Um, no, I'm not sponsored by them, but if you see this Redrick's, these are my favorite <laughs> preferred canvases actually, um, just because of how smooth they are. I don't gesso the canvases. Um, I use them as is. I just really don't love having texture in my paintings because I want to be able to get as detailed as possible and have uh, more control and be able to make that decision um, kind of as I go as far as whether or not I want more or less texture uh, in my paintings. I also mainly use Liquitex Basics and Liquitex Heavy Body Paints uh, mostly because of the transparency of the Liquitex Basics. I do like to do more layers and glazing so that I can have more transparency and luminosity in the piece. Heavy body I use depending on how much coverage I really want to accomplish. Um, those tend to be a little bit more opaque. Um, they, you can definitely water them down um, but the inherent opacity of that paint is kind of why one would go for them. I use mainly the blues, um, so I used it for the sky and um, the suit have some heavy body colors in there as well. Um, If you want to know more about which particular items I'm using, like my canvas or the paints, you can check out my description below. I'll have them linked to uh, some sites that I use to get my items. For my mediums, you'll see that I will coat the canvas often, especially for a large area, with the acrylic medium so that I can control the drying time a little bit more. Acrylic paints are great because they don't take as long as oils, but I am not fast enough <laughs> to blend acrylics the way that I really truly want to blend them. So I use a one to one to one ratio of Nova Colors Matte Medium and their Acrylic Retarder. I also use Liquitex's Slow Dry Blending Medium too. And in this, in the case of this painting, I actually made a mistake and added some satin medium to my concoction. Um, and honestly, it turned out pretty great. Additionally, you might see some little glitching across the screen uh, because my poor computer just cannot handle having a microphone and a webcam at the same time plugged into its only solitary USB port. So um, apologize for that, but I don't believe that it comes up too many times in this video. Parts that I enjoyed the most were probably Red's eyes and his beak. So you'll see that in the middle of the video. If 
you are interested in seeing the entire process all 20 odd hours then let me know in the comments below so that I can get something put together. I know a lot of other artists have some Patreon channels where they have the full unedited versions of their paintings and do narrated tutorials um, overlaid on those videos. If that is something that y'all are interested in, I am totally down to go down that path. I also really enjoyed painting the suit uh, kind of caught me by surprise. I procrastinated on this section for so, so many months. I just could not psych myself up because even when I did my graphite and colored pencil, I mostly did portraits. So my expertise is honestly with people and less so objects, um, clothing, textures, that sort of thing. So I was just really psyched out <laughs> about the suit. And honestly, like, I thought it came out pretty good, like considering how nervous I was uh, to even start. So I really liked that section of the painting. And the flowers were also a little bit of a struggle originally because I wasn't quite sure how I was going to convey focus in the composition. So it's a really large painting and there's a lot kind of going on. So I really had a couple of goals with this piece as far as um, technical goals go. One of them being experimenting with what items are sharp and what items are rendered a little bit more loosely. And I think I kind of got the hang of it. I did was following some rule of thirds and <laughs> some proportions there. Uh, I really wanted the eyes and the kind of the center of the piece to be the focal point, so I focused on the eyes, the beak, um, his suit, his bow tie, those things to were supposed to really just hold your attention. And then there were um, the two flowers kind of flanking on opposite sides to give some symmetry as well so you can kind of bounce between the flower to the face to the other flower to then the bow tie and the suit just kind of helping you travel around the space of the painting. One of my other goals from a technical perspective was to kind of similar in a similar vein figure out the strength of my edges and which edges can kind of be a little bit more blurred out and which ones need to be a little bit harder edged um, in order to kind of draw the eye appropriately and inform the shapes that are there uh, to give a more three-dimensional appearance and make things less flat. We also wanted to Make sure that my values were appropriate. I do tend to have to force myself to push the values a little bit and see more variation and I think that's just something that you develop kind of over time. It's a little bit easier for me uh, when I do graphite work um, so switching over to color and paint, which is a whole different beast for me, um, has been pretty educational. And my other biggest goal was just to finish. This has been my biggest piece so far. It is, tw it is 24 by 36 inches. 
And honestly, I'm proud of myself for even navigating it because the amount of internal screaming that I had to do to push the through was insane. I mean, everybody talks about how painting is just so relaxing and art is just like their escape from the world and while art is my escape from the world, make no mistake that as the perfectionist that I am and have always been, it is not necessarily the most relaxing time when almost everything that I'm doing is new to me. <laughs> so I've only been painting for the last year um, and really within the last six months is when I've like gone to town. I've painted seven paintings this year and each time it has been an adventure mostly because like I am honestly still figuring out how paint works <laughs> as opposed to colored pencils you know and as a self-taught artist not a full-time artist I'm a part-time artist I have a full-time job I go to work I help patients during the day and then I come home at 7 30 8 o'clock at night and then sometimes I have energy to do art and sometimes I just go to bed sometimes I just roll into bed <laughs> um, so paint is still relatively new to me um, so every painting that I do I feel like I'm learning something new every time because there's a texture or an object that I haven't rendered yet and so I every time it's a challenge for how I am going to plan and execute that particular section of composition. And so until I get more familiar with the process and how to do things, like it doesn't have to be an adventure um, in planning every single time <laughs> that I do something, then I will still probably scream a little on the inside until I get it done and I get it done to my satisfaction. Uh, one of the things that um, has really helped me kind of move through these difficult feelings <laughs> that come up when I paint is like painting until something looks good and learning how to correct my mistakes I think is part of the process. Um, I know I'm not the only one <laughs> who kind of makes happy little accidents every time until something turns out right. I think it's really just layering and perseverance um, and eventually it will turn out and sometimes if it doesn't turn out then I can always paint over it and that mentality has really just helped me start liking the process and I think that's the most important thing. I don't want to just do art to do art. <laughs> I want to enjoy the process. Like there is a point in time where it does become enjoyable and I think I'm getting pretty close. Towards the end of the painting I actually just was enjoying the process which is new to me since I spent <laughs> I want to say like 75% of the painting like straight up struggling um, and I don't want to complain or um, like knock myself down too much but I I think I'm getting the hang of it. I'm struggling less and less when I sit down to paint and like I'm excited like it's starting to be fun <laughs> so I can't wait to keep it up and do some more projects and show y'all what I come up with.
to talk a little bit about what inspired my piece red I want to start off by saying that I really appreciate that art is really up to the beholder. It's really about what does this particular piece mean to you, the viewer. You know, I could have a certain intention and emotional experience when I'm creating a piece, but once I release it into the world, like, it's for you too. So I, I would just really want to emphasize that um, whatever your interpretation is, is totally also valid because like, it is also for you, not just for me. So my inspiration, my inspiration for this piece actually comes from some conversations with my partner about um, our personalities. And for those of you that know me, know that I am a pretty huge Myers-Briggs nerd. Um, a lot of my friends are in those communities. Uh, and even though we all know it's not 100%, you know, scientific and 100% true, it still gives us a mm, language framework from which we can explain parts of how we process information. And so my partner tests as an ISTP and I test as an ENFJ. Um, for those of you that don't know Myers-Briggs, um, there's introversion versus extroversion, intuition versus sensing, feeling versus thinking, judging versus perceiving. And in different orders, um, those functions arranged differently have different ways of processing information. So um, my partner's a little bit more um, introverted and hands-on um, and more in the moment than I am. <laughs> I am hardly an extrovert. I am a pretty introverted extrovert, um, but definitely very abstract, head in the clouds, you know, lots of feelings, feelings all, the all day, all the time. Um, I need to have plans <laughs> in place um, so that I can feel secure. Well, we had a conversation about him loving red-tailed hawks and we have a few of them over here as well and it's always um, really nice when we actually do get to see them because they um, don't have a very large foothold in the population especially um, the more we deforest areas they are just a little bit more elusive by nature um, on top of that so he really relates to red-tailed hawks just because they are focused on their mission <laughs> they are hungry they're gonna eat and they're gonna do the thing and they're just gonna get it done um, and just revel in it <laughs> um, and I am a less solitary critter um, I do like to be around the people that I care about not big crowds not a big fan um, but the people that I love I could be around them often very often um, as long as I'm not, you know, having to talk all the time <laughs> and entertain people. Um, and I can just be me. So, uh, I am more of a little, like, prairie dog type critter, which is ironic, right? Because you would think that that is the prey for an eagle. Um, so, <clears throat> the inspiration for the piece came from... Us having a lot of conversations about like oh did we spy any hawks today and also kind of trying to drag him into my whimsical world of bright colors and feelings <laughs> and 
he likes to drink his coffee. Um, but in this case, you know, is Fred drinking tea or coffee? We'll never know. Um, but he is a very dapper gentleman. Um, kind of confused, but you know, willing to explore his new environment that he has found himself in, uh, in this very new and bizarre world where flowers are just kind of popping out of nowhere and <laughs> colors are just very saturated and life is weird, life is different. He has two legs and arms, you know. He was just a hawk yesterday, now, now he's anthropomorphic, okay. Um, so it's, it's really an exploration of our conversations and uh, a, an homage to our depth of feeling and dedication and interaction over time. So it's a very personal piece for me. Uh, it's made with a lot of love. So hopefully you enjoy it as much as I do. I am toying, I have not committed to it yet, um, with doing a companion piece with Squeak, um, the little prairie dog companion. Um, it may happen, it may not. <laughs> I will have to be in the right mood to kind of tackle one of those. Um, I have another piece that I'm working on right now, uh, completely different, um, different energy, different vibe. So I'm excited to kind of start on that. Um, I am pretty notorious for not doing collections. I probably should just from an artist perspective, having some sort of cohesiveness in my body of work. Um, I am grateful that I have a particular color scheme <laughs> that I tend to stick to. Um, some colors that I really just like looking at um, because the themes kind of vary depending on what aspect I am exploring at that time whether it's um, my feelings, whether it's the um, collective unconscious, whether it's mythology and what those myths represent to us, um, what they mean to me um, as a person as well. So it, it is difficult for me to do multiple iterations <laughs> of one particular concept. So once I'm done with something, I'm like, okay, I'm done. I am motivated by novelty and doing new and challenging things. So doing more of the same thing, oof, is tough. Um, like, look at me now. I actually just finished a um, companion piece to the very first yokai painting that I did. Um, it's up on my Instagram, don't have them up here. Um, but that's like a year later so I may end up you know doing squeak later on down the line but right now is not the time so um, stay tuned for my next project it's gonna be an even bigger canvas it's gonna be a 48 by 60 inch which is actually just about as tall as I am I am 5'2 but just barely um, so that is gonna be an adventure 